Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. I thought I would mix in another entry here because I just had a fantastic tour done there in Las Vegas uh, that was called the uh, the Las Vegas Mafia Tour. Uh, highly recommend it if you have a chance when you're there in Las Vegas to please take it. It's a little over two hours or so. I might do a separate video just dedicated to everything that we did there. But yes, at least with regards to this tour, it was fantastic and they focused on someone that was not really known to me a mafioso that was within the infamous hole in the wall gang that I never heard about and I'm pretty sure you've never heard about only because this guy for whatever reason he just remained in the back burner everyone else remembers like uh, Anthony uh, the Ant Spilatro but nobody seems to remember this guy even though he is truly considered rightfully so one of the most psychopathic killers in the mafia world or was so and this is this you're looking at him now this is the guy himself his name was Larry Newman but like most other mafia gangsters, he went by a nickname. His case, though, was called Lurch because of his gigantic physical build. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about all the information associated with this notorious killer in the mafia world. So who was Larry Newman? Well, not much is known about his early life, uh, like in terms of what his childhood was like, what he did in school, that kind of stuff. All that's known really is the fact that, interestingly enough, he grew up in a family that was pretty rich. I mean, he was considered to be pretty well off. In fact, when his father passed away when he was a young uh younger person his father left a whole bunch of money millions in fact in a trust fund so this guy Larry Newman was essentially your average trust fund baby so much so that whenever he became a certain age he would have this trust pay him a good amount of money each month I mean talk about easy free life um, every single month he would just get a substantial amount of money just given to him because of his family's connections that just makes his the number notion afterward that he would commit so many uh, ghastly murders even more bizarre because he has someone that would have no reason to do this considering how well he was off other than the fact that he truly absolutely enjoyed being a psychopathic killer but sometime along the way later on in life um, he eventually became a uh, part of the Chicago outfit crew. It was weird. Like most, it seems like most of the people that were within the hole in the wall gang, they were not like made men. Like you would think in the terms of like the mafioso guys that get initiated. No, instead they were more like independents. Like they worked with the mafia, but they weren't necessarily part of the mafia other than a few of them like, like Tony Spilatro. But yes, eventually in Chicago, he would become part of a crew there that would eventually lead him to Las Vegas. First off though, he was known for committing three murders there in Chicago back in 1956. This will give you a good idea of essentially how crazy and psychotic this guy was. He was at a bar one day when he encountered a young man and then uh, there at the, uh, the the bartender essentially was, was providing him drinks and then he gave him some change based off of those drinks. So this guy Larry Newman then walked out of the bar and then looked at his change and then he thought to himself, hmm, this guy shorted me two dollars from what I gave him. So rather than let's say like your average person just go back and then ask about the money or since it's just two dollars, you know, for forget about it, consider an extra tip. He instead went back to the bar, returned with a shotgun, blew away the bartender, and then because there were two other people there as witnesses, a newspaper man and I believe one other woman, a waitress as well, he blew them away too. So he basically killed three people out of the blue just because he was shorted two dollars in change there at the bar. Crazy stuff. I mean, th this would be the kind of stuff that that you would, that truly is someone that is like a serial killer, someone that has no empathy at all towards life itself. And then, sure enough, he was eventually convicted and sentenced to 125 years. Normally, that would be the end of him, but because he had so much money. Uh, from his trust fund, he was able to hire some of the best lawyers there in that area, and they were magically able to s reduce that sentence from 125 years to about 11, and then he was paroled afterward. Isn't that crazy? He blew away three people over $2 
And then somehow he was able to manipulate, thanks to money, uh, the courts to essentially give him only about 11 years in prison. Either way, though, eventually he came across another guy in the hole in the wall that would eventually form the hole in the wall gang called Frank Collada, who worked with Tony Spolatro. They got together and then they would be able to then do several things there in Las Vegas. This is because at that time, then Tony Spolatro was there in Las Vegas to try to make sure that the skim was going correctly and that nobody would uh, skim the skim and then also they would do a lot of other various jobs with in particular that being robberies so Frank Collada uh, who he had met again in prison got this Larry guy to come out I think from Chicago to Las Vegas and then become part of the gang things went I guess somewhat well because they would do a couple of jobs but this guy the lurches psychotic nature would again present himself because even Frank Collada would state later on like how scared he was of this guy because of what he did like for example there was yet another robbery that was going to be planned this time uh, Frank Collada had a good information that stated that the guy they were going to rob would have about 250 thousand dollars of jewelry with him at the time it would have been a simple thing essentially go into the guy's home or wherever he was rob him and then that uh, or rob him or the store and then leave despite what the what the uh, movies tend to make you think in the world of mafia they're not really in it to kill people per se because that just attracts too much attention not because they're good guys but only because it would just bring too much heat instead they would much rather rob rob people and then that way um, if, they, if they ever do get caught they won't have anything serious pertaining to them so that's what the plan was here Lurch was gonna go with another guy I think his name was uh, 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 Wayne if I'm not mistaken another member of the hole in the wall gang and then they, that would be it but later on when they met afterward and he had the jewelry Frank Collada asked if everything went as well as expected and is then Lurch responded something along the lines of well I had to kill him and then of course Frank was just pissed off because the way he explained it uh, Lurch did he stated that once he got back into the store and then he saw this guy there that they were supposed to rob this was his exact quote he said when I got into the store I said F it I put my gun down grabbed the machete that was hanging on the wall and then I just started stabbing him and then uh, the other guy Wayne broke a vase over a head and so clearly this was another situation where his 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 murderous tendencies just simply took over he couldn't control himself and then he was he was there killing him and so that's when they knew that they were dealing with someone that even they were scared of because of 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 the notorious violent nature that this guy had at this point um, so much so even that there was even another instance where Tony Spilatro was quoted as stating that never ever he hopes never to have this guy unleashed on him because of his murderous nature. One more other notable aspect that got into Lurch's life had to do with his ex-wife. Apparently he received a phone call one day telling him that his ex-wife was roughed up by someone back in Chicago. Remember, this is his ex-wife. They're not married anymore. They're not together at all. But he still got that phone call some way. And then he, once he hung up, he was talking to Frank and telling him, I'm going to have to go kill this guy. And so, of course, Frank was telling him, no, you know, don't do that. Don't bring that much heat to us. Uh, we're just essentially here to do robberies that kind of stuff and so he uh, gave it gave it a couple days later and then that's when Lurch said that he's going to Chicago so Frank tried to make sure that he could do something to stop him from killing the other guy and then inadvertently bringing all of them down so he told them okay you can go to Chicago but if you do so take your kid he was thinking that maybe this is a way to calm him down because surely he wouldn't kill someone in like while his kid was with him. That would be just be insane because then it would bring um, uh, bad stuff could happen with the kid while they were around. But lo and behold, when he when Lurch went back to Chicago. He found who the guy was that roughed up his ex-wife, then and then he basically shot that person right there in a lounge, if I'm not mistaken. There was some kind of public place or some kind of place that they met, and then the guy had his own girlfriend there at the same time, and because she was a witness, he shot her in cold blood too. And then of course Frank asked him afterward, you know, why he did that, why he has to do that, and he said, I had to. It's because the more uh, that this guy was telling me why he grabbed my ex-wife's neck, the more pissed off he was getting 
And so that's why he shot him in the forehead. And then he shot what he called the, the woman the broad. And then they both gurgled. And so he shot them both again. And even when he was told that the poor woman that he shot, who was an innocent in this case, a civilian, was just someone that, that was just there at the wrong place at the wrong time. And she even had a couple of kids of her own. His response was something along the lines of, well, the kids are probably better off now. And then that was it. Eventually, though, um, Lurch and some of the other hole-in-the-wall gang members, they were caught. They were sent to prison. Um, I even was able to stop by one of the places where they were caught uh, by the uh, police and by the FBI. And then eventually, Frank Collada himself turned into an informant, and he testified against Lurch, essentially putting him away in life. He was able to tell him all this. He was able to tell the prosecutors everything that the hole-in-the-wall gang did including what Lurch did as well. They even met up once in prison, and, and, and that's the last time that they saw each other from different sides of the bars in this case, with Lurch being locked up and then Frank walking by, and he was just throwing him all these F-bombs and then telling him, you know, what are you going to do to me? But then that was it. That was the last time they saw each other. Uh, Lurch was eventually sentenced to life yet again. Remember, he was sentenced to 125 years before, uh, but reduced to 11. This time, though, there was no chance at all because of all the crimes he committed, and it was without the possibility of any parole. Eventually, he ended up dying back in 2007. And then the way that um, the tour guide was mentioning, uh, the only reason that they're able to disclose all this information and then mention like Larry Newman's name and what he did was because he's dead because they're not going to dare discuss him in public knowing what this guy can do and, and what he did in the past too. But that's it. That's all the information tied to this unknown, uh, very, very little known figure in the mafia world known as Larry Lurch Newman. So if anyone has any more information, anything else they'd like to share, please post those comments below. The tour guide was right. There's a movie that's just waiting to be made about this guy because of all the stuff that he was in. Not let alone the fact that he was part of the hole in the wall game, but also because he has his own story. And again, what makes it so fascinating is why he would do all this considering he was so well off. He was just absolutely just crazy in the head with 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 psychotic tendencies for him to do something like this so all right everybody thanks again as always take care